Hello, and welcome to Strange Talk with Doc. I hope everything is good with you, and I hope everything is good with yours. I want to talk about a lot of things today. We're going to keep it brief. We're going to keep it moving. But I do want to talk about, you know, going for it and going for it hard. And when you finally hit that wall, that's when you even try to go harder. Don't let the wall be a deterrent to stop you from getting to whatever goal it is that you have. I don't care if you're a podcast. I don't care if you're trying to save money. I don't care what it is. If you're trying to learn a new language and you're stuck on sentences, keep going harder. Push yourself to the limit that you thought you could never reach before by just digging in deep. Whatever you want is inside you, the ability to go get it. You know that there's realistic things that we have to think about. If you're 400 pounds and you're five foot tall, maybe you are not going to dunk like Michael Jordan. That's just reality. We must deal in reality. But if something is obtainable, losing weight, uh, learning a new skill, finding a new job, being a better father or being a better child, being a better husband, these things are obtainable. These things with hard work, just put in the work. Don't expect anybody to gift you. If you get gifted, God bless you. And then take that gift and pass that gift on to somebody else. But most of us are not going to be gifted. We're going to have to work hard. And who said the Michael Jordans, the Mike Tysons of the world, didn't put in the work, the Beyonce's, the Einstein's, they put in the effort, the energy and the work to make their dreams come true. And that's what we have to do. I want to focus every show on at least a minute or two just talking about something that's real life that has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm also talking to myself. I'm not just talking to you. I am basically talking to myself out loud because there are things that I want to work on. I want to be a better golfer. I want to hit the ball straighter each and every time. I want to lower my score, but I have to put in the work. Nobody's just going to say because you look good out on the golf course, Doc, that all of a sudden your game is going to be better. Just because I brought custom clubs this year, my game is going to improve. I'm going to need to work on skill sets to make myself better. Not only have good equipment, the best equipment that I possibly can afford, but I also have to put in the work to make my efforts worthwhile so that I don't actually digress, but I progress. And that's what I want to do. I want to do that with this podcast. I want to do that with every aspect of my life. I want to get better. I want to be a better person. My job is to be a better person in this life Help as many people in this lifetime that I possibly can. Not wish about it, not dream about it, but actually do it. To be somebody that somebody could say, you know what, maybe he gave me a push in the direction that I needed to go. He said something that was worth listening to. I don't do this podcast just to blow air out of my mouth. It does not make sense. And I don't want to waste your time doing that type of thing. We lost William Bill Wright. He was the first black player to win any PGA championship. He was, he actually died on February 19th. So I apologize for missing this. He was 84 years old. The ex NFL player, Lewis Nix III, passed away at 29. Uh, I don't want to go into any details that I do not have about this young man, but he was missing at one time. I believe he also had been previously shot not too long ago. And the circumstances of his demise, I do not know. I will not speculate. I will not do anything to his legacy, to his name. All I am mentioning is that this brother, Louis Nix III, passed away at the very young age of 29 years old. Irv Cross, pro bowler, former football player and broadcast legend. He died at the age of 81. When I was a kid, it was Pat Somerall, Herb Cross, Phyllis George, uh, Jimmy the Greek. These were the announcers and the people that were on TV that I would see every weekend. We didn't have multiple stations like we do now, ESPN, NFL Network, 
Red Zone. These things didn't exist. So if you got a job like Herb Cross, and he was one of the very first black men to ever do analysts for the NFL. And so I say rest in peace. He died at the age of 81. The world also lost Peter Gotti, the brother of John Gotti. He was 81 years old. I could give less than a rat's fuck. Those Gottis, those Gambinos growing up in Brooklyn, and they were out on, like, in between Brooklyn and Queens. It was a very racist neighborhood. If you were black, you really couldn't go over there. So I don't have any love for the Gottis. I don't have any love for the Gotti name. I'm not one of those people who want to take some Italian's name who would have hated me and use it as something, as a code of honor because I don't think they had any honor as far as I'm concerned. When you hate people who ain't never done nothing to you only because of their color, you know what? You got no honor. There's something wrong with your soul. COVID cases are up to 29 million in the United States of America. 512,000 people have died. Worldwide, 111 million cases and 2.5 million people dead. The FDA approved a third vaccine from Johnson & Johnson. It's supposed to be a one-shot jab. As of yet, I'm still not on anybody's list to receive the vaccine. Once again, I extend my hand out to anybody who might have received it, who would like to discuss the side effects, what you were going through, your mental state of deciding if you wanted to or not take the vaccine. Please reach out to me via my website. This would be the only thing that I ask for you to do. I won't ask you to subscribe. I won't ask you to share. I won't ask you to like. I'm out of that business. That is organic. If you choose to do so, God bless you. And I thank you. I appreciate every single person who takes a minute of their day to listen to me. I really do. And that's from the bottom of my heart. I cannot be any more honest because what happens is you don't have to do it. And I appreciate the fact that you don't have to do it and you took the time anyway to give me a chance to hear what I had to say, to see if I could entertain you. And I appreciate you for that. So the Supreme Court had refused Donald Trump's bid to stop a subpoena for his tax records. This is long overdue, these tax records, and they have been received by the New York prosecutors. But there have been, what they say, millions of copies of papers. Let's see what Cyrus Vance and the Southern District of New York can do with these papers or are we blowing wind again. These people had that CPAC uh, conference this weekend, which is the Conservative Political Action Conference. It was from February 25th through the 28th. You know about it. They had the golden statue. Once again, Ted Cruz out there making an ass of himself, you know, and I just want to leave this nugget with the people. If you are a fan of Trump, and I want you to listen to me carefully, judges, 10, 14 states, go and cry out to the gods you have chosen and let them save you when you're in trouble. If you are going to pray to the golden calf or golden statue of Donald Trump, do not forget that when you are in trouble, the gods that you have chosen, let those be the gods that you call out when you are in trouble and see if Trump, Cruz, and the light can save you from a day of trouble. And I am talking about life and death. Finances have failed. Health has failed. Will this be the golden statue that you pray, that you bet your soul on? Well, if, you, if that's what you're willing to do, good for you. This governor from Florida, Ron DeSantis, he decides Friday that he wants to uh, have the flags at half staff in honor of Rush Limbaugh whenever his funeral happens. Rush Limbaugh does not deserve this honor. I posted on YouTube the rules and regulations for half staff. You should have been somebody who had uplifted a nation, it's a sign of mourning. This man was a racist, a homophobe, a bigot, a liar, a thief, a drug addict. And not to say that you can't be a liar, a thief, and a drug addict and turn it around and become a decent person, but it seems like up until his demise, he never decided to be a decent person. 
the House passed a bill, you know, that they're going to enshrine LBGTQ protections in the labor and civil rights laws. They're going to add them into the labor and civil rights laws. Do I believe that lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgender, and queer people should be fully protected under the law? Yes, I do. I'm 100% for them. I'm 100% for their marriages. I'm 100% for them being allowed to be on each other's insurance policies. I, I mean, I'm 100% in favor of if somebody wants to give power of attorney to their lover, that that's fine. Now, what I am not in favor of, and I don't care if I come off homophobic, you need to listen to me carefully. Don't put words in my mouth. Listen to what I say and not what you think you hear me say. Transgender athletes, competitions between transgender athletes, and I hate this word, and I'm not going to use it. Uh, let's say for a better term, people who are of the sex that they were born, as they say, cisgender. I don't like that word cisgender. Heterosexual, whatever you want to call it. You, If you identify with the sex that you were born, that's who I'm getting at. I don't believe that transgenders should be allowed to be in physical activity sports with people who are cisgender. It's a dangerous road to cross. And I'm, when I say physical, I mean even track and field because I do not want to see a transgender woman fighting a male. I just don't want to see that. I don't want to see a man that's transgender and into a woman fighting women. I do not want to see a male who's transgender or transitioning into being a woman racing against a born woman. They are going to be advantages. I don't care if you're not taking testosterone or you no longer have estrogen. What's going to happen is you also had a life before that where you built up certain skill sets, you built up certain speeds, you built up certain strengths, and you have an, an advantage. Or you will have a distinct disadvantage and you will always be a victim. Do you really want to see the UFC a female who is big enough to be 170, but she was born a female, and now she's transitioned into a male, and she's a 170-pound male. She looks good physically. She looks masculine physically, and now she's fighting a born man. Do you think that will end up well? So I listened to Drake's Certified Lover Boy CD, and I'm going to give that, if I had 57,000 thumbs, I'm going to give them all down on that. I thought it was trash. He wasn't speaking to me. I don't even think he was speaking to grown women. It sounded like he was making an album to teeny bopper chicks. And I didn't, I'm not interested. I'm not a teeny bopper chick. It was boring. It was horrible. And I wish I never listened to it. And once again, that was Drake, certified lover boy. Big thumbs down. I watched The Black Church with Henry Louis Gates Jr. It was a documentary on PBS, two-parter. It was a very interesting documentary. A lot of it I couldn't relate to. I didn't grow up in what's called the black church. I didn't grow up Methodist. I did not grow up uh, Pentecostal. I did not grow up Baptist. I am more, uh, I'm a Catholic, uh, a black Catholic. So I did not grow up in what was considered the black church. I didn't have the fire brimstone preacher who had a big whole sway on my mother or my grandmother. That's not something that I grew up about, but I did find this good viewership. So if you have nothing else to watch, you can watch The Black Church with Henry Louis Gates Jr. It's not boring. It's fast moving. It's very good. I finished off The Stand. The Stand was outstanding. The first four episodes are a little slow, but between five and nine, they pick up the pace. They keep you interested. So I would give that thumbs up. Family Guy was outstanding as usual. The Keenan show is terrible, people. 
I tried for the second time to watch the Keenan show, and the Keenan show is unwatchable. I have never watched that show again. I can't believe that the same guy who's on SNL kicking ass is doing this horrible show, but a payday is a payday. I tried to watch a Kevin James uh, Amazon series called The Crew about a race car crew. That was also horrible. I did not make it through the first episode, and it was 10 of those. I, I deleted them from my files, got rid of it, and I said, I got to move on. The Good Doctor, I watched a marathon of that. They were all outstanding. I'm a big fan of Bob Hart's Abby Shola. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I also watched a marathon of the latest season of SVU. It was a little weird because they're trying to do pandemic and you could see that they were leading into Stabler's return, which I thought was cool. I watched the marathon of SWAT. I found them all to be entertaining. WWE Raw and WWE SmackDown have both been outstanding the last couple of weeks as far as I'm concerned. The Young Rock is a winner of the TV show so far. I checked out Latifah's The Equalizer. I've seen the first three episodes. I enjoyed them all. Queen Latifah, I hope that you stay for longer than the season. I would really enjoy watching this show in the future. I also watched the United States versus Billy Holiday. And I want to give a congratulations to Andrea Day for winning the Golden Globe last night. I think it's well-deserved. This was an outstanding uh, movie, if you will. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. She brought the funk. And in between the movie, a song came on that stopped me in my track. And it was called Slow Dance with the Devil. And it was sung by Charlie Wilson and a brother named Sebastian Cole. And I just had to stop the movie, find out what this song was, and just listen to the song before I returned back to the movie. That's how blown away I was by this song. So, as you know, Tiger Woods was injured. In that one car rollover accident. I wish Tiger nothing but the best. I wish his family nothing but the best. I have nothing negative to say about him. I've done some shows on meeting or banging into, let's put it to you that way, physically banging into the man one day at 30 Rock. And that's not anything to be rehashed right now. I wish him a speedy recovery. Do I really believe that he'll ever be out there again on a consistent basis? More than likely not. He wasn't out there on a consistent basis to begin with lately. His back is an issue. Now, if the legs are an issue on top of the back, I just wish that he doesn't have any problems with his pain management. I don't wish that on anybody. I wish it's a smooth transition through this pain management situation for him. The UFC had a card, Rosenstruck versus Gain. And this was pretty much a boring card. I mean, give or take one or two fights, it was all right. But the UFC 2021 has been slacking, man. We got a big card coming up this week. Alessandra is fighting Blakovich. Amanda Nunes is on this card. So I am hoping for the best. I believe Dominic Cruz is fighting on this card. So on paper, the card that's coming up on the 6th is outstanding. But we have to see. So far, there's been six. UFC cards, and five of them have been doo-doo. So the NBA, Mark Davis, the owner of the Las Vegas Raiders, he brought the Las Vegas Aces. Good for him. You know what? I hope that he pays the ladies what they deserve. I want to see the WNBA players get some money where they don't have to go over to another country to cash in that they can cash in right here in the good old USA, and we can promote them. There are a lot of young women out there who play soccer. There's a lot of young women out there who play basketball. Big these women out. Put their faces out there. Nike, Adidas, Under Armour. Get them some sneaker contracts. Give a woman a signature shoe. Put them out there. I mean, don't let them just be professional athletes and need to play in Russia and Turkey and Japan just to make a living. So the Atlanta Dream was sold. And I have to say congratulations to Renee Montgomery. She's a two-time NBA, WNBA champ. 
She retired to fight for social justice, and she made it her business to become a partner in buying this Atlanta dream from that former senator, Kelly Loeffler. And good riddance to Kelly Loeffler. I'm glad that she's out of the WNBA. I'm glad we don't have to hear her voice. I'm glad that from now on, she's nobody. The Timberwolves fired their head coach, Ryan Sanders. Ryan Sanders happens to be Flip Saunders' son. And they hired Critch Finch, who I'm wondering if his father was Coach Finch. So I don't know if this is uh, nepotism meets nepotism again, but we shall see. Here's the premier basketball games to me of the NBA this week. We got tonight, the Pacers are playing the 76ers. The Nets are playing my Spurs. Tuesday, the Nuggets are playing the Bucks. Sunday, no, and the Suns are playing the Lakers. I'm sorry. Wednesday, you got the Jazz versus the 76ers. The Warriors versus the Blazers. And Thursday, you have the Raptors versus the Celtics. Then the NBA goes to a slight break because the All-Star game is Sunday, people. The All-Star game where you have the slam dunk contest, Three-point shoot, the skills challenge is all Sunday afternoon to Sunday evening. Now, some of the people that I personally think got snubbed is Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, Bam Abadayo, Demontis Sabonis, and Trey Young. What happens is this thing is an old boys network. Chris Paul should not be on the All-Star game over Devin Booker. I, I don't care who says that. You take Devin Booker over Chris Paul, but Chris Paul's in the mix, and what can you do? He's OG. He's uh, vetted. He's uh, locked in, and his boys are going to make sure that he's taken care of each and every year. I mean, there are some people. Think about this. James Harding. I don't know what you do with James Harding. James Harding was an all-star for the West. No doubt about it. All-star for the West. He's only been in the East for maybe 15 games, and he is already on the Eastern all-star team. So he took a spot from, say, Chris Middleton, and it ain't right, but it is what it is. There is no such thing as fair. Fair is where they judge pigs. That's not reality in life. I appreciate you once again. This has been Strange Talk with Doc. And like I said, remember this, man. Go for anything that you want as hard as you can. And when you hit that wall, that's the wall telling you that you need to just put more energy, more effort, more study, find out more about the situation. Don't give up. That's where your blessing is going to be, right as you hit that wall. As you're being told no, right around the corner is that yes that yes is coming and when it embraces you and with the warm embrace of a yes it's going to be well worth all the hard work all the energy all the study all the practice all the sacrifice dedication that you put into achieve whatever it is that you needed to achieve i'm going to tell you like i tell you each and every time people peace to you and peace to yours